coming today. My name is John Arnold. I'm a professor in chemistry here at UC Berkeley, and I have the privilege of being the director of the new Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Philomathia Conference, this year entitled Green Chemistry, Collaborative Approaches, and New Solutions. 2011 is the International Year of Chemistry. It's an opportunity to recognize and celebrate the great good that chemistry brings to our lives. The chemistry pioneered by two of today's speakers, Paul Anastas and John Warner, which we now call green chemistry, compels us to consider broader aspects of the entire chemical enterprise as we strive to develop and implement new science and innovation that leads to safer, cleaner, and more effective chemical processes and products. The breadth of chemistry impacts all our lives, from little babies to the student in the chemistry teaching laboratory, from the food we eat to the air we breathe to the water we drink, from our cars to our TVs to our cell phones, and to the drugs we take that keep us healthy and prolong our lives. Chemistry is everywhere. The BCGC was therefore founded on the principle that further advances and solutions must be informed from a broad perspective. And that's why this, is, uh, why this enterprise, BCGC, features a multidisciplinary campus-wide approach. In his recent book, Triumph of a City, the economist Edward Glazer makes the case that in cities, human endeavor excels in many forms because cities bring people together in close proximity to do good things facilitates communication and exchange of ideas. So in this virtual age, I think it's very important that BCGC all also aims to do good by bringing people together to exchange information. Not just faculty, researchers, and students in an academic setting, but through our BCGC consortium, we aim to further extend the engagement to include the whole spectrum of stakeholders in chemistry's reach from researchers to manufacturers to consumers and stewards of the environment. Glazer's notion of the good that results by physically bringing people together is further exemplified in our being here today for the 2011 Philomathia Conference. On behalf of the BCGC, I'd really like to thank UC Berkeley's talented staff and administrators from offices across the campus whose work to put together this event and the BCGC has been outstanding. Personally, I would like to thank a number of people. I probably won't get to mention everybody, but in particular, Dan McGrath and Carlette Altamirano from the Berkeley Institute for the Environment for their help in establishing BCGC and in, in organizing this symposium. I wrote everybody down just so that I would get, get everybody in here. Um, the Dean's staff in the College of Chemistry, in particular, Mindy Rex, Karen Elliott, and Nancy Horton. Thank you all for, for your work in organizing this symposium. The BCGC management team. We have a great staff of, uh, of people from across campus helping to run the BCGC. Um, our executive director, Marty Mulverhill, whose efforts to promote green chemistry on the Berkeley campus have been nothing short of heroic. Uh, we don't have a medal yet for uh, Marty, but uh, one day we'll give Marty a medal. And our associate directors, Meg Schwartzman, Mike Wilson, Christine Rosen, Alistair Isles, and Bob Bergman for all their work for the center. I'd like to thank Tony Kingsbury from Dow and the Haas School of Business, who's been a great supporter of BCGC and whose encouragement and advice has been invaluable in the center. We can't forget UC Berkeley's wonderful and talented students who from the ground up are making BCGC what it is today, who've supported our research and our educational goals. Before we hear from our first speaker, it's also my honor to introduce three very important people on campus who provided campus-wide support and without whom BCGC would not exist. Dean Richard Matthews in the College of Chemistry, who has been a tireless supporter of um, the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry. Professor Bob Spear, professor in School of Public Health and former associate dean of the School of Public Health, 
and the College of Engineering for his support. But first, I'd like to welcome Chancellor Bergino, who has helped to establish UC Berkeley as a hub for research in energy and sustainability. It's my pleasure to welcome him to the podium to say a few opening remarks. Chancellor. Thank you so much, John. It's great to uh, be here and to see you know, this uh, meeting on such an important subject, oversubscribe. Uh, as you just heard, I'm Bob Bergino, the actually ninth chancellor of UC Berkeley, astoundingly in my seventh year, uh, but also a professor of physics and material science and engineering. Uh, welcome to UC Berkeley, all of you, and to the Benetau Auditorium in Citrus, which is the Center for Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society. I guess we might call this chemistry in the interest of society uh, as well, so it's well placed in, in this facility. Uh, also, of course, welcome to the 2011 Philomathia Conference at UC Berkeley, Green Chemistry, Collaborative Approaches, and New Solutions. This is the first national conference by the new Interdisciplinary Center for Green Chemistry. We aim to highlight UC Berkeley's leadership across numerous disciplines in speaking to the role of green chemistry in responding to society's needs for a green design at the molecular level. This conference is sponsored by the Philomathia Foundation, whose mission is based on the belief that, and I quote, independent thinking, creative application of technology, and respect for others and the environment are the basis for improving humanity. I think just such a great uh, phrase and such a great mission for a uh, foundation. And I want to make a special greeting and expression of thanks to the people who created that vision, the founders and good friends that happens personally uh, of the Philomathia Foundation, good friends of mine, uh, Wilfred and Leslie Chung. Wilfred and Leslie, where are you? There's Wilfred and there's Leslie. <laughs> In the pursuit of its core values, the, which is the preservation of our environment, the Foundation has provided generous support to UC Berkeley for a number of important initiatives in the area of alternative energy. In 2008, the Philomathia Chair in Alternative Energy was established at UC Berkeley, and uh, we're proud to say the first holder of the chair was none other than Steve Chu. Current Secretary of Energy. So uh, I, I think Leslie and Wilfred felt pretty good about our first chair point, appointee. Uh, and uh, they can feel equally good about our second appointee uh, to this chair, uh, who is Professor Chris Somerville, Director of the Energy Biosciences Institute. And Chris, I saw you earlier. First chair. First chair. So it's a really uh, star-studded group, including all of the people, including John himself and all of the people that he acknowledged. Uh, so with Philomathia's support, we strive to present the most advanced ideas on how leading-edge science, technology, and governance can be a blueprint for a sustainable planet Earth. And I can't imagine a more worthy mission. So thank you all for coming. I want to thank all of the speakers. And again, thank uh, Leslie and Wilfred for making all of this possible. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite Dean Matthews to, to say a few words, please. Thank you very much, John. Uh, it is my great pleasure on behalf of the College of Chemistry to welcome all of you to, Phil to the Philomathia Conference on uh, Green Chemistry. Chemistry is not only the central uh, molecular science in a technical sense, but we also now bear the broader responsibility of engaging in and addressing the health, environmental, and sustainability uh, issues that confront our society. Recognizing this responsibility, we have seen a dramatic increase in the interest of our students and of our faculty in the science of green chemistry and sustainability over the last few years. Now, 
In my uh, own case, uh, this uh, understanding was really catalyzed by the joint uh, Haas chemistry uh, program in sustainable products and solutions, supported by uh, Dow, that was started four or five years ago. Uh, and uh, this uh, program started a, a symposium or a seminar series in sustainable practices. And we were lucky enough to have John uh, Warner come here. I don't see where you are, John, right? Uh, come and uh, give a very nice presentation which catalyzed my thinking in this uh, topic. And uh, those discussions then led to the formation of the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry, now led by John Arnold and Marty Mulvihill as well as the other associate directors in a wide number of uh, schools and colleges, public health, college of natural resources, uh, engineering, uh, and also business. Now, the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry will, of course, focus on uh, research uh, activities in green chemistry, health, environmental effects, toxicology, alternatives assessment, uh, exposure, risk management, and sustainability practices. But going beyond that, we see a great deal of leverage uh, in having the college focus on incorporating green chemistry and its practices into our undergraduate, graduate, and uh, postgraduate educational activities. So to give you uh, an example, uh, Marty and uh, Michelle Dusky uh, are in the process of redesigning our undergraduate laboratories and curriculum to both teach and practice uh, green chemistry. This has been assisted by a grant from the California EPA Department of Toxic Substances Control. And uh, so all the undergraduates, both our majors and all the undergraduates coming out of UC Berkeley in the future, uh, will view green chemistry as a natural part of the chemistry uh, curriculum. At the graduate level, uh, we've engaged faculty from many schools and colleges to collaborate on a now popular multidisciplinary course in green chemistry and sustainable practices. And this will ensure that our PhD graduates, when they go out after four or five or more years of study, uh, will have a, uh, a broader perspective on uh, their role uh, in society and, and a good knowledge, uh, a better knowledge about their profession. Finally, uh, there's an issue of the roughly 30-year installed base of chemists, chemical engineers, and other professionals uh, in our community. Uh, and to address this, we have championed an interdisciplinary model uh, that uh, exploits an opportunity to collaborate again with the Haas School of Business on an executive education program. This effort, which is led by Professor Keith Alexander in chemical and biomolecular engineering, will help executives, scientists, and middle managers gain a deeper understanding of the technical dimensions of sustainability leadership, including green chemical chemistry technology. So I believe that uh, with this effort, Berkey will join the ranks of other universities, uh, including Yale, uh, Oregon, and others who have embraced the science of uh, green chemistry. And together, we will lead the way to a sustainable uh, 21st century. Toward this end, I look forward to a very successful conference. And I'm glad to all see all of you here. Um, next is my pleasure to introduce Professor Bob Spear and invite him to say a few words to you. Thank you, John. Um, Dean Steve Shortell uh, is giving a keynote address uh, at another meeting, and he asked me to stand in for him today, and I'm happy to do so, and welcome you on behalf of the School of Public Health. Um, and to give you a, a brief perspective on the involvement of the school and our Center for Occupational and Environmental Health uh, in the subject of your conference today. I'm pleased to do so since uh, I've been a supporter of uh, Mike Wilson and more recently Meg Schwartzman's activities uh, in this area from Mike's early involvement, which began about 2003 with uh, the REACH initiative uh, and, uh, and colleagues in the European Union. And my personal interest is motivated by the fact that I've spent about two-thirds of my career in carrying out research and advising various governmental agencies about the unintended health effects of chemicals, mostly in the occupational environment. Initially, I worked on the uh, elucidation of an acute poisoning problem affecting California farm workers arising from the use of the organophosphate pesticides, which in the end was a matter of some unsuspected environmental chemistry. 
And later on, the soil fumigant, dibromochloropropane, uh, which produced serious and specific reproductive effects in, in male workers, an effect that had never been previously reported or seriously considered for chemicals used in, conference, in commerce. Uh, these problems are with us still. Uh, as uh, we were talking uh, uh, last night, uh, uh, methyl iodide uh, in agriculture being uh, the most obvious example. Um, these after-the-fact studies of effects of chemicals in human populations and the regulatory actions they engender are often adversarial and expensive, let alone damaging to those who are affected. So a new approach that is not adversarial but cooperative and less costly in dollars and in impact is very appealing, appealing to me and people like me, I think. And that's the promise of green chemistry from the perspective of people in occupational environmental health. I doubt if any of us expects progress to be easy. Merging the disparate perspectives almost certainly that are represented in this room today, we know to be no easy task. But it's an exciting prospect and nonetheless, and again I want to echo and um, really say that I think the College of Chemistry is off on absolutely the right track in the, the educational activities with undergraduates and graduate students because they're the ones that are actually uh, going to bring this to fruition and implementation. Uh, we got to get it started, but hopefully they will already move the agenda. So on behalf of Dean Shortell and myself, I wish us all an enlightening and productive day. Thank you.